This is part 79 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how SQL Server detects deadlocks, what happens when a deadlock is detected, what is deadlock priority, and finally, what's the criteria that SQL Server uses to choose a deadlock victim when there is a deadlock. This is continuation to part 78, so please watch part 78 before proceeding. So how does SQL Server detects deadlocks? In SQL Server, there is a background thread called Lock Monitor thread. This thread runs every 5 seconds by default to detect if there are any deadlocks. If the Lock Monitor thread finds deadlocks, the deadlock detection interval will drop from the default 5 seconds to as low as 100 milliseconds depending on the frequency of deadlocks. If the lock monitor thread stops finding deadlocks, then the database engine increases the intervals between searches back to the default 5 seconds. So what happens when a deadlock is detected? When a deadlock is detected, the database engine ends the deadlock by choosing one of the threads as the deadlock victim. The deadlock victim's transaction is then rolled back and returns a 1205 error to the application. Rolling back the transaction of the deadlock victim releases all the logs held by that transaction. This allows the other transactions to become unblocked and move forward. Now let's understand what is deadlock priority. By default, SQL Server chooses a transaction as the deadlock victim that is least expensive to roll back. However, a user can specify the priority of sessions in a deadlock situation using the set deadlock priority statement. The session with the lowest deadlock priority is then chosen as the deadlock victim. Here's an example of how to set deadlock priority. If you don't specify deadlock priority explicitly, then the default is normal. Now we can set this deadlock priority to low, normal or high. We can also set it to an integer value in the range of negative 10 to positive 10. Low maps to negative 5, normal to 0, and high to positive 5. Now, let's understand the criteria that SQL Server uses to choose a deadlock victim. If the deadlock priority is different, then the session with the lowest priority is selected as the deadlock victim. If both the sessions have the same priority, then the transaction that is least expensive to roll back is selected as the victim. If both the sessions have the same deadlock priority and the same cost to roll back, then a victim is chosen randomly. Let's understand this with a couple of examples. So here I have already set up two tables, table A and table B. And at the moment, table A has got five rows in it and table B has got one row in it. And here is the SQL script to create those tables and populate it with test data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. Now, I also have two more instances of SQL Server Management Studio running and we've got two transactions here and both the transactions are trying to update both the tables, table A and table B. Transaction 1 wants to update table A first and then table B, whereas transaction 2 wants to update table B first and then table A. Now at the moment, we have not explicitly set the deadlock priority for any of the transactions. So by default, it is normal for both the transactions. So now let's execute part of our transaction one. And look at this, you know, in table A we have got five rows. So basically we are setting name to name plus transaction one, okay? And we are updating all the five rows in table A. And we have only executed part of transaction one. Now let's execute part of our transaction two. So here transaction two is first updating table B and table B has got only one row, so one row affected. Now when we try to execute the second update statement within transaction one, it will be blocked because transaction two has already acquired a lock on that table. Now. If we try to execute the second update statement of transaction two, there will be a deadlock situation, okay? Now, when there is a deadlock situation here, which transaction will be chosen as the deadlock victim? In this case, transaction two will be chosen as the deadlock victim because it is the one that is least expensive to roll back because this transaction has updated only one row. So we can very easily, SQL Server can very easily roll back that one row as opposed to rolling back five rows. That's why it's going to choose transaction two as the deadlock victim. So let's look at that in action. So now the background thread is running 
and it has detected the deadlock and it has identified transaction 2 is the one that is least expensive to roll back and that's why it has selected that as a deadlock victim rolled the transaction back and notice we get that 1205 error and transaction 1 let's go ahead and commit our transaction 1 and if we look at the data in both the tables table A and table B it should say you know name transaction 1 in every row of both the tables so let's look at that now so let's select the data and look at that name of the person and then it appends transaction 1 to all the rows alright now let's set deadlock priority explicitly and see what's going to happen so first of all let's actually go back to this vendor and put the data back in the state it was before we started this transaction so I'm going to truncate the data that's present in both the tables and then insert it back so insert into table A and then into table B and then let's just select the data to make sure we have just the names of the people alright now let's go back to our transaction windows and I'm going to set deadlock priority for transaction 2 so set deadlock underscore priority and let's set that to high and we are not setting deadlock priority for transaction 1 so it's going to stay at the default um, and that is normal so in this case transaction 2 deadlock priority is high so when there is a um, deadlock you know in this case transaction 1 should be chosen as deadlock victim so let's go ahead and execute part of our transaction 1 and part of our transaction 2 and then the second update statement in transaction 1 and the second update statement in transaction 2 so there should be a deadlock and notice that transaction 1 now is chosen as the deadlock victim because it has you know a lower deadlock priority than transaction 2 okay so let's go ahead and commit this transaction and let's select our data now to make sure so now it should have updated all the names uh, to name and transaction 2 let's check if that's the case and look at that here's the first example that we just discussed and the second example where we have set the deadlock priority explicitly thank you for listening and have a great day